Hello, I'm Yuri Dekavni, Solutions Architect with AWS. Today I will show how you can implement attribute-based access control model in AWS using Identity Federation with Okta Universal Directory and AWS SSO. To understand the benefits of the attribute-based access control, or ABAC for short, let's first take a look how it compares with the role-based access model that many companies use today. In the role-based access control model, or RBAC, you are assigning specific permissions to the users and groups at the role level, which allow all the users with the same job role to have exactly the same level of access. As your organization grows, you may want to have more flexibility in your access model than the RBAC typically allows. For example, you may want the DevOps engineers having a project-based access where an engineer from one team can access only their project-specific resources but denied access to the resources on another project. While role-based access control can support such scenario, it often leads to creating and maintaining multiple versions of essentially almost identical cookie-cutter security policies for different teams with only slight modifications. In addition to that, Changing access level in role-based model usually involves two personas. An identity administrator that manages the user identity's data on your identity provider side or user directory, and a policy administrator who manages access permissions on the AWS side. So for every policy change, you have two different touch points. You are now going to see how ABAC can help you address these challenges. First, in ABAC model, you define permissions based on user's attributes, not based on roles. This means that with ABAC, your policies have conditions that compare the value of user's attributes, such as team or project, with the value of the same attributes on the resources user is accessing. Your user attributes in this approach serve as variables that you can change at any time in your identity store. So you can now give people in different roles access to the same resources much faster on as needed basis. Second, the ABAC approach also helps you to scale your permission system as you no longer need to update or create new policies when you add new resources or new people to the project. Instead, you assign attributes to your users in your identity store and then assure that resources have the matching attributes. You can change the behavior of your access controls without having to change the control itself. You can also manage fewer policies with less administration time since now your system is more flexible and you not longer need to create a special policies per each group of resources or each job role. You can use the same policy applied to many resources or resource group, and it will be decoupled from the user's job roles. And today, AWS SSO enables you to implement attribute-based access control, benefiting from managing your access to AWS accounts and services centrally with AWS SSO. Let's see this in action. I'll start from the user's experience accessing AWS accounts using Okta Identity and AWS SSO with attribute-based access control. In my demo, I will be using Okta Universal Directory as my identity source for AWS SSO. Let's imagine Alice is the developer building a new application in AWS, which is part of the project Orange. Alice needs to store a username and password which your application will use to access an Amazon Aurora relational database service for MySQL instance. She uses AWS Secrets Manager to store her keys. Alice navigates to her Okta IDP and signs in with her Okta credentials. Here she has AWS SSO application configured by her Okta admin, so Alice clicks on it and gets redirected to the AWS SSO where she can see the list of AWS accounts and roles assigned to her by the AWS SSO admin. Alice chooses her development account and gets redirected to the AWS Management Console. She goes to the Secrets Manager service 
than to her secrets. First, she wants to quickly take a look at another secret she created a couple of days ago for another application that is also part of the project Orange. She clicks on that secret and checks its rotation configuration. Now she sees that her colleague Bob, who works on another project called Project Green, also created a secret here and she wants to view its rotation configuration. When Alice clicks on the Bob's secrets, her access is denied because she is not assigned to the Project Green by her OTA administrator. Now Alice goes ahead and starts creating a new secret. She chooses credentials for RDS secret type, enters her initial username and password, leaves default encryption key unchanged, and chooses the Aurora RDS instance she is planning to access from her application. On the next page, Alice enters the secret's name, skips the tags here, and clicks Next. She uses the same Lambda function, which her other secret uses to rotate this secret, clicks Next, and then Store. Note that Alice is getting an error while trying to store the secret, since she forgot to tag and to name her secret according to her organization tagging policy. To correct that, Alice goes back, adds orange dash prefix to the secret's name, then adds two tags that are enforced by the AWS IAM. She has to add the tag name with the secret's name and the project tag orange she is working on now. If she violates these rules by mistake, she is not able to store a new secret. After making these changes, Alice stores the secret successfully. To see a different example, let's now sign in to Okta IDP as Bob, who is working on the project Green. Bob navigates to the Okta IDP, signs in with his Okta credentials, chooses AWS SSO application, and signs into the same development account with the same AWS developer's role Alice was using. He goes to the AWS Secrets Manager and looks at his secrets here. You can see Bob can access his secret, why Alice couldn't. Now let's take a look at this scenario from an administrator perspective. As AWS SSO admin, I go to my AWS SSO management console, then to the groups menu and you can see that both Alice and Bob belong to the same AWS developers group. Alice's and Bob's identities including group membership are synchronized from my Okta IDP using System for Cross-Domain Identity Management or Scheme. And when I go to the Accounts menu and choose the development account, I see that it has AWS Developers Permission Set provisioned here and assigned to my AWS Developers Okta group. When Alice and Bob are signing into the development account, they both assume the same AWS IAM role, although, as we've seen in the demo, they can only access the resources that belong to their projects. To understand how it works, let's talk about implementing attribute-based access control in AWS. In AWS, attributes are called tags, so you use them among other things to implement ABAC. You tag your resources with the specific tag values and you build your access policies using conditions, where you compare the tag value on the principal, IAM user, role, or IAM session, to the tag value on the resource this principal is accessing. When AWS IAM checks permissions for this specific action, it evaluates these policy conditions and allows or denies access accordingly. The IAM role that both Alice and Bob assumed while accessing the developer's account has been created by the AWS SSO from the AWS developer's permission set. Now let's take a look at this permission set. You can see that it allows access to AWS Secrets Manager's resources if the resource tag project value on the resource is equal to the principal tag value. It also enforces tagging and naming policy, and this is why in the demo Alice was required to tag her new resources using the project name Orange she's working on. Based on what we've seen so far, 
you probably can guess that in our demo, Alice and Bob have different principal tag project values, and that guess would be correct. In general, while user uses temporary AWS credentials, assuming AWS IAM role, on logging in with federated identity, the value of the principal tag may come from an IAM role, when your IAM role tagged with a static tag value, a session tag, when tag passed when you assume role, or transitive session tag, when the tag is inherited from the previous session in the role chain. And today, you can configure AWS SSO to pass users' attributes to AWS STS when you are signing in to AWS account with AWS Management Console or CLI, and these attributes become session tags on that IAM session. Now, let's take a look at my AWS SSO identity source configuration. If I go to the settings tab, you can see that I configured Okta Universal Directory as my identity provider using SAML and Scheme. I also enabled attributes for access control here. When you use Active Directory or AWS SSO Native Identity Store as your identity source, you can define your session tags by clicking on the view details here and entering the attribute name and mapping it to the supported attributes. When you are using an external identity provider as your AWS SSO identity source, you can also define your session tags here. For example, you can configure session tag cost center mapping it to the IDP attribute cost center. The value of this attribute should be pushed by scheme from the IDP to AWS SSO. Alternatively, you can use AWS SSO in path through mode for ABAC. Then you configure your identity provider to pass its directory attributes for access control with the SAML assertion to AWS SSO. If the SAML assertion from the identity provider contains access control attributes, then AWS SSO will pass these attributes to AWS STS. If you defined the same attribute in AWS SSO, taking it from the user's attributes pushed by scheme, and your IDP passes the same attribute in the SAML assertion, then AWS SSO mapping will take precedence. As far as you can see, I don't have any attributes configured in AWS SSO, and if we look at the Alice's SAML assertion from Okta to the AWS SSO, we see that it contains project tag orange. So let's take a look at the Okta Universal Directory configuration. Now, as Okta administrator, I am going to the Okta admin portal, then to the SSO application I configured here. I configured SAML Federation with AWS SSO, as well as enabled scheme provisioning. I have the AWS SSO application assigned to the AWS Cloud Access Group, and also configured that it synchronizes all my groups if the group name starts with AWS. Now, if I add or delete users from these groups, update users' attributes for the users that belong to these groups, these changes will be synchronized with AWS SSO. Now, let's take a look at the Alice's user profile. You can see that Alice has a custom attribute project set to orange. If I look at the Bob's user profile, the project attribute value is green. I also can use a standard attribute here, such as group, for example. Now, let's go back to the AWS SSO application, then to the SAML configuration. This is where I configured a project attribute to be added to the SAML assertion from the Okta users directory. To complete this demo, let's take a look at the administrator tasks managing users' access on a daily basis. Let's imagine my organization started a new project called Purple, and Jenny is the new developer who just joined the team and is going to work on the project Purple. First, I need to grant Jenny access to the AWS environment by adding Jenny to the Cloud AWS Access Group. This essentially assigns the AWS SSO application to Jenny in the Okta user portal. Next, I add Jenny to the AWS Developers Group. 
this group has been synchronized by scheme with AWS SSO. So if I go to the AWS SSO, then to the user's menu, I can see user Jenny being pushed from Okta. I go back to the Okta admin portal and edit Jenny's user's profile in the Okta directory. I set the project attribute in Jenny's profile to purple. Now, Jenny signs into Okta user portal and clicks on the AWS SSO application. She's redirected to the AWS SSO user portal and signs into the same development account that Alice and Bob are working on. Jenny goes to the secrets manager, and if Jenny tries accessing Alice's or Bob's secrets, she's getting access denied error. But she can store a new secret in the secrets manager, naming it and tagging it appropriately with the project purple. As far as you can see, it's very easy to manage your workforce AWS permissions at scale with Okta Universal Directory and AWS SSO using attribute-based access control model. Thank you for watching. It was Yuri Dekavni with AWS Solutions Architecture.